Um, are there any questions? We've got about five minutes. Yeah, I can speak for longer than I can take questions I'm, I'm for longer. I'm surprised, Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Andrew. Uh, Minister, I have a son in Year 11 who's planning to enter university in 2016. Yeah. Uh, I've told him hex is a great deal and he shouldn't be too stressed about uh, what it's going to cost him. But yeah. if in your spreadsheet he had, uh, and let's say he was heading for law at Adelaide Uni and had $11,000, say, plugged in now, can you give him any guidance as to how he should update his planning spreadsheet? <laughs> He's very sophisticated, Andrew, if he's got a spreadsheet plan for uh, his costs. I wish I had that uh, level of sophistication. Uh, well, I can't really tell him how much the fees will rise or not rise because all the universities will make their own assessment about the value that they place on their courses. But I guess the best news for him is that every dollar of it he'll be able to borrow up front and it'll be the best loan he'll ever get in his life. Because unlike a credit card loan or a house mortgage, the bank will not require him to pay any of it back until he's earning over $50,000 a year. And even then he only has to start paying back 2% of his income. And the interest rate will be the 10-year government bond rate, which is about 4% now. And we've put a cap so that it can't rise above 6%. So the decision that he'll make is, is the price that the universities are asking me to pay can I, re can I get that back through my anticipated future earnings? And that's what every consumer has to decide every day. And I think that will make the... Uh, I think students already bring a fair amount of discretion to what they choose to study, but that will make them even more likely to, to, to consider carefully uh, the jobs that will be in the market in the future and whether they'll be able to get one with the degree that they are tr planning to do. I can tell you sort of generally though, we expect the Commonwealth Scholarships Fund to have about $200 million in it. It's a pretty, it's not a very accurate estimation because it might be less, it might be more, but about $200 million, which must mean that we're expecting the extra revenue that universities raise to be about a billion dollars, spread across all the various institutions that, char that decide to charge. Now, some universities will actually c compete on price because they'll think, well, we can do that. We will do less research, which is costly, and we'll compete on price through having high-quality teaching. And one of the important parts of this reform, why I'm very passionate about it, is I don't think we should have a one-size-fits-all university sector. I think we should have some of the best universities in the world that are probably research focused and teaching and we should have other universities that focus on both and we should have other universities that just do teaching as high quality teachers and I can't see any reason at all why there is an intrinsic worth in having a one size fits all university system. So uh, I'm excited about the prospect. I read Warren Bevington's um, statements this morning in the advertiser and apart from the headline which was designed to frighten the electorate uh, Warren made the exact point that I'm making, which is that in, within universities, if you are in a tutorial with 20 students and you have a, a world-renowned um, uh, professor, like the international trade courses at Adelaide University, and you are doing more research and less teaching, uh, you might be prepared to pay more for that than if you were in a tutorial with 100 students uh, being taken by a a uh, non-world renowned um, educator that does more teaching and less research, you should have the choice about whether you want to do that kind of degree instead. This is exactly the whole point of the government's reforms, to free the universities to do the things that they do best, to give students the more opportunities and spread the Commonwealth Grant Scheme across private providers and all the sub-bachelor courses so that people on low SES, from low SES backgrounds, who are typically first generation university goers, can do those courses that mean they don't then fail. Because the Kemp Norton report found that in the first year of the undergraduate degrees, 24% dropped out under the demand-driven system. But those people who'd done a diploma or an associate degree somewhere else, like a TAFE or University of Western Sydney, who run these courses typically in the USA does as well, and Flinders does too, um, they didn't drop out. So that's the kind of philosophy behind what we're proposing. 
one more question. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. The um, uh, premise of most of your talk has driven, been driven around um, customers, in this case, mostly 17-year-olds, taking market signals in a reasonably sophisticated way. Yeah. I guess what we've seen is we have a situation where the, um, the uh, enrolments in um, uh, forensic science and robotics are certainly much, much higher than the... Uh, than the jobs that are available in those areas. There's obviously um, television programs that appeal to, um, and other, th other things that, that appeal to 17 year olds. How, how, do you, how do you see that you can actually get the, the sort of uh, market accuracy when, um, when, when the decisions are being made by uh, perhaps an un uninformed uh, market? Well, most year 12s, of course, are 18, Marty, these days. Uh, so they're not 17 year olds. I think you painted the worst picture you could. Uh, many of them do a, another year after that of a gap year and uh, choose to do other things. So a lot of them are 19-year-olds. And I don't know if you have any children. I have four. Mine are aged 6 to 13. And I'm surprised. You've got six children. Well, you've done much better. Um, I think uh, they're pretty sophisticated. I think you're being a little bit condescending, dare I say it, because I think students make a very informed choice. Uh, about what they want to do at university. And if they make the wrong choice, the great thing about Australia is they can choose again. They can do something else. They can leave partway through their university and change the course of their direction, and many students do. A lot of the people who um, I interact with because of all these children that I've got, whether that's through sport or babysitting or going to the schools, etc., cetera, they, um, make a, they sometimes make the wrong choice in first year and they change in second year, and this is this is exactly what they should do. This is how the market operates. But to help students, we're going to establish a, a thing called QUILT, the Quality Indicators of Learning and Teaching. That will cost the government some money to get it right uh, so that the consumer is as informed as they possibly can be should they choose to make themselves informed. And because some students will be paying, potentially paying higher fees, which they'll then borrow from the taxpayer, you would think that they will make a more, even more informed choice in the future than they do under the current system. 